Well, babe, say, how about a little... Ow! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie Pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere of Brooklyn. But right now, I'm Maisie Revere of the Saltwater Hotel in Florida, where I'm known as Why Doesn't Room 380 Pay Your Bill and Get Out? I got here with a guy who had a mind-reading act and was known as Shang Duel of the Great, or if you knew him before, Max Gubernick. Well... I got questions from the audience and kept their eyes busy while Max palmed the questions and read them. The act went fine. Max read everybody's minds and found out they were all wonderful people. They loved that and thought he was great. Then he read my mind and found out what I was thinking about him and what his chances were and I was out of a job. However, I stayed down at the hotel I wanted to eat and finally today the assistant manager, a nice guy named Jim Thorndike, knocked at my door. Yeah, I'd better not take any chances. Who is it? I'm busy in here. It's Jim Thorndike, Maisie, the assistant manager. Oh, well, Miss Revere just left down the fire escape, Mr. Thorndike. You better hurry down if you want to head her off at the gate. Hey, now, wait a minute. Who are you? Um, I'm Carrie, the chambermaid. No, you aren't. I just passed Carrie in the hall. <laughs> well, bust my buttons, y'all trap me. I'm Carrie's twin sister. I'm helping her out today. Well, in that case, I'm not really Jim Thorndike. I'm his twin brother, and I'm not mad at Miss Revere. Open the door, Carrie's twin sister. Oh, <laughs> I guess I can't fool you, Mr. Thorndike. Oh, uh, now, Maisie, I thought you were going to call me Jim. Oh, sure, Mr. Thorndike. I mean, uh, Jim. Well, you haven't forgotten what happened the other night when we went walking in the moonlight, have you? Oh, no. I hope the scratches are all healed up now. Oh, I didn't mean that. I mean, what happened just before. Yeah, I remember. You kissed me. Oh, Maisie, I couldn't help myself. As soon as I put my arms around you, my blood turned to fire. My heart started pounding away madly, and I... Uh, 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 uh. Let's not reenact the crime right now. <laughs> oh, now, why not, Maisie? I'm crazy about you. Oh, please, not now, Jim. Maybe you'd better throw me out of the hotel. Oh, I couldn't. Can I count on that? Yes, but Mr. Grimshaw, the manager, would be delighted to throw you out. Maisie, you did write for some money from your friends in Brooklyn, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I heard from them today. Oh, what did they say? They wanted me to send them $50. You mean they didn't send you anything at all? No. Well, that's the way life is, I guess. They always kick you when you're down. <laughs> Of course, my friends kick me when I'm up, too. Oh, now, Maisie, what are we going to do about the bill? Well, I think you'd better throw me out, Jim. I'll hike down the road and move into Mother Mulligan's stop and flop. No, Maisie, no. I can't let you do that. Oh. Um, who is it? It's Mr. Grimshaw, Miss Revere. It's Mr. Thorndike in there. Uh, no, no. Uh, tell him no, Maisie, no. Stop prompting her, Thorndike. Let Miss Revere do her own lie. Well, that ripped it. Hello, Mr. Gimshaw. You look happy. What's wrong? Hello, Miss Revere. Oh, hello there, Thorndike. I thought I'd find you under the bed checking on the fuzz ball. <laughs> no, sir. Eddie's, Thorndike, Eddie's. Uh, yes, sir. 
Miss Revere, you do seem to be something of a problem child here. Uh, you owe us money, uh, thanks to Mr. Thorndyke's inability to refuse credit to any good-looking chick who flips her eyelashes at him. Mr. Grimshaw, if you feel that I in any way have impugned the reputation, I have a... Oh, this... for heaven's sakes, Thorndyke, don't get huffy. I couldn't bear it. Well, I'll be responsible for any credit I've extended. No, no, I'll take care of it somehow. Are you responsible, Thorndyke? Yes. The way the books stand now, you're a credit risk yourself. Uh, I had another idea, Miss Revere. Well, that idea's out. Yes. What's the second idea? I can wash dishes, wait on tables, or stuff fish for the fishermen. What sort of deviltry did you have in mind? Uh, Miss Revere, I admire you. You seem to sense that I have something up my sleeve. Do you know what it is? Could it be a handkerchief? No, it couldn't. <laughs> that will do, Thorndyke. Yeah. Miss Revere, the Saltwater Hotel could throw you out on your ear right now, but it would lose the money it's wasted on you. Therefore, I am making you the social director as of now. Social director? Yes. You'll try to keep everybody happy. Keep them from realizing that the only thing that's any good around here is Pierre's wonderful food. Also, if there are any people to ease out of the hotel, you'll do those nasty little jobs, too. Oh. Any questions, Miss Revere? Well, yes. If I'm going to be an executive, uh, how about moving me out of this tiny little room? Every time I nod my head, the window goes up and down. Oh, I think this is just peachy for you, Miss Revere. Oh. You're working off your indebtedness as social director here, and as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the quicker. Well, couldn't I at least have a softer pillow? This one here's giving me a cauliflower ear. It looks fine to me. Try to lift it. Uh, no, thank you. Now get busy, Miss Revere. I'm expecting a lot from you. And if I have any difficulties with you, I'll fire Mr. Thorndyke and then call in the police. Thank you for your confidence in me. I'll do it, too. Take over, Thorndyke, and watch your step. Yes, sir. What a tough character. Well, what's my first assignment, Jim? I might as well get started. Well, Maisie, we've got one big problem in the Saltwater Hotel. Oh? She eats like a horse. Mm -hmm. She made herself the social leader here, and she complains about everything. She's richer than anybody, and her name is Hortense Poppinjay. Well, just leave it to me, Jim. I'll get rid of that problem. Um, can, can I borrow one of the bellboys if I need one? Oh, you sure can, Maisie. And, Maisie, please keep Pierre the chef happy. He's very important. Now, don't worry, Jim. I've never been a social director of a fancy resort hotel before. But I think I'm going to be the best one you ever had here at the Saltwater. Oh, I'm sure you will be. What makes you so sure? Well, we've never had a social director here before. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Sydney. Oh, hello, Maisie. Oh, gee, you look lovely. Well, thanks, Sydney. <laughs> How's summer school coming along? Oh, summer school? Swell. I'm studying like mad. Uh -huh. I'm going to be a doctor someday. You'll see. Well, good for you, Sydney. Gee, I hope when I get a little older, I'll be able to afford a girl like you. Wow, wow. <laughs> well, now, okay, Ooh. Sydney, that's enough panting. You're singeing the rickrack on my blouse. Well, gee, Maisie, I, I can't help myself. What did you want me for? Whatever it is, I am your slave. Oh. Well, wh what floor is Mrs. Poppinjay on? Oh, this one right here. Uh, what did you want her for? Well, I don't know whether you've heard, but I'm the social director of the Saltwater Hotel. And my first job is to get rid of Mrs. Poppinjay. No kidding. I guess she's annoyed everybody in the hotel, hasn't she? Oh, yes, yeah, she has. She's very fussy about her food, and she thinks she's a member of high society. Well, wait till she meets her grace, the Duchess of Grunion. Gee, is she here at the Saltwater Hotel? Where is she? You're looking right at her. Huh? Now, I want you to knock on Mrs. Poppinjay's door and announce me. Oh, oh, I get it. Y yeah, yeah, it'll be a pleasure. Your grace. I'll embarrass her into leaving. Oh, and quick, Sidney, loan me two $20 bills. I I'll give them right back to you. Two twenty? Oh, oh, yeah, here you are. And don't you worry about it. I'd love to have you in my clutches. Come in, come in. Mrs. Poppinjay, arise. You are being visited by the Duchess of Grunion. Ooh, a duchess? How do you do, my dear Mrs. Poppinjay? 
I am Lady Dorothy Beaverdam, Duchess of Grunion. Oh, here you are, dear lad. Oh, a twenty-dollar bill. Thank you, Your Grace. It isn't necessary to lick my hand. Now, do be a good chap and bring me any cables or messages that come for me, won't you? Oh, certainly, certainly, sir. Ah, well, you'll uh, pardon my barging in on you like this, old dear, but I heard you used to be the social arbiter of the hotel. I thought I ought to drop in and see you off. Uh, see me off? But I'm not leaving. Oh, but surely you aren't going to say after I've tipped you off the throne. The humiliation would be frightful, old girl. Oh. Now, see here, Duchess. Bow when you say that. Oh. Surely you observe the common niceties, Mrs. Poppinger. Well, I... Uh, perhaps I should, but I don't... Uh, bow a little lower, if you please. Uh, I'm a very high Duchess, you know. Yes, oh, yes. Lower. Uh, lower. Oh, oh help! Oh, now, see here, old frog, you can't make a mockery of our British customs like that. Stop rolling around on the floor. I can't get up. Well, rock a little harder. <laughs> now, you are a butterball, aren't you? <laughs> oh, here, I'll help you out. Oh. <laughs> Good heavens. I do believe your girdle gave up the ghost. <laughs> As we say in merry old England, ripping, eh, what? <laughs> Well, I will say you spread out a bit. <laughs> oh, do pardon me. It is a bit ludicrous, you know. <laughs> oh, come yes, in, come yes. in. Oh, beg pardon, Your Grace, but there is a cablegram for you. The Sultan of the... Uh, oh, oh, Mrs. Poppinjay, what happened to you? Never mind. And keep your eyes the other way. Oh, to be sure. Uh, the Sultan of Franistan wonders if you would spend next Thanksgiving with him and his wives. Here you are. Oh, Oh, he really is a dear old thing. He signed it, Love from Jean, Hedy, Juanita, Dagmar, Ingrid, Fifi, Rita, Dolores, Tallulah, and me, Sam. <laughs> Here you are, laddie. Another twenty dollars. Thank you. And there's lots more where that came from. Don't be too sure. Are you leaving your grace? She certainly is, and I'm leaving this hotel. I won't stand for this kind of treatment. Bully for you, Poppinjay. That's the old spirit of 76. Go down to the desk right now and demand your independence. Don't think I will. Give me the manager and tell him to put on his asbestos earmuffs. I've got things to say that'll go right through him and fry his ear. Maisie, you were sensational. Yeah, I do do that bit rather well. Huh? Oh, uh, just keep that forty dollars in tips. Oh, gee, I never had so much fun with my own money before. Well, now I'm going down to the manager's office and get a little applause. Oh, Thorndyke, the things that horrible woman called me. The vile names, the odious comparison, <laughs> the reflection she made on my dear old grandmother and grandmother. Oh, no, no, there, there, Mr. Grimshaw. There's always at least one troublemaker in every hotel. Yeah, I can't imagine what happened up there in Mrs. Poppinjay's room. She said something about some English duchess who insulted her. But there's no English duchess here. Well, come in. How do you do, old chaps? Would you mind awfully dredging up a hot pot of free tea for the Duchess of Grunion. Oh, no. No, no. Crazy, it was you. Uh-huh. I promised you I'd get rid of that problem, and I did. Mrs. Poppinjay is leaving. Thanks to me. Maisie, Maisie, our problem was keeping her happy, not getting rid of her. And if she goes, we'll all be fired. She has the most expensive suite of rooms here, and she has plenty of wealthy friends who will leave with her. Now, wait, wait. Don't give up. I'm going to try a wonderful idea out of Mrs. Poppinjay. Maybe I can keep her here. Oh, what's the idea? Well, jeepers. I haven't thought of it yet. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
And now, back to Maisie. Oh, Sydney. Hello, Maisie. <gasps> well, thanks, Sydney, but we've got no time for comedy. What comedy? I'm not whistling at you. I'm paging Mrs. Poppinjay's dog. Oh. Well, what's been going on in Mrs. Poppinjay's room? Are you insinuating that I had my ear to the keyhole of her room? Yes, and I can prove it. The key is still sticking in your ear. Oh, oh, oh excuse me. Now, what's going on in there? She's packing and getting ready to leave. But she's going to have lunch first. She's crazy about food, you know. Yeah, I'm counting on that. Well, here goes nothing. Come in. Congratulations, Mrs. Parkinson. Oh, so it's you again. Let me tell you something, you blonde-headed little... Uh, congratulations on what? Well, when I was here before, I was giving you sort of a secret test for the lead in our little theater production. To see what your reactions were, you know. Me? Uh-huh. I'm the, uh, social director, Miss Revere. The Duchess of Grunion, eh? I thought there was something fishy about it. Uh, well, uh, my dear Mrs. Popinjay, <laughs> I may call you Mrs. Popinjay, mayn't I? Oh, well, I... You were simply wonderful. What well, a I... performance. Ooh. I thought you were actually angry. Who did you study under? How long were you in the theater? Well, I, I did a few small things in the high school dramatic group. Oh, well, then, Mrs. Poppinger, you will stay at the hotel and help us put on a play, won't you? Stay here. Uh-huh. Oh, my dear child, I can't now. I've already wired the owner of the hotel and told him what I thought of the management. Oh, no. No, you didn't do that. Western Union refused to send four whole lines of the telegram. The only thing I do like about the Saltwater Hotel is the food. <gasps> oh, that's wonderful. Well, Mrs. Poppinjay, do you know why the food seems so wonderful to you? Because it tastes good? Oh, no, there's more than that to it. Can't you feel that each dish you order has been given special attention? Well, I thought That so. someone in his own quiet way has been trying to say I love you with every order of stuffed cabbage and every bowl of turtle soup. What, dear? Yes, Mrs. Poppinjay. Uh -huh. Your dinner may just be dinner to you, but a very handsome, distinguished-looking man sees it in a way of sending you his love in the mashed potatoes and his undying adoration in the cream spinach. Love? Oh, Miss Revere. Are you trying to say that the chef is in love with me? <laughs> yes, madly. Oh, how exciting. Oh, my... And to think I've been eating his love letters and never even realized it. <laughs> well, I will stay on a few more days, perhaps. Oh, I'm sure you'll be very happy you did. I'll see you later. Oh, I wonder what his love letter will be like tonight. Maisie, Maisie. Oh, oh, Jim, I just fixed it up. Mrs. Poppinjay isn't going to leave after all. I was listening at the door. Maisie, you might as well know it right now. Pierre, our chef, hates Mrs. Poppinjay worse than oleomargarine. Oh. Oh, but Pierre, you've never even seen her. Can't you even pretend you're secretly in love with her? Miss Reville, I'm a Frenchman. And when a Frenchman makes love, it is no secret... You don't believe it? Just step into the vegetable room with me for a few minutes. Oh, well, I don't doubt you for a moment. But what's wrong with her? Miss Revillo, I'm also an artist with food. I can fix a can of dog food, so it is fit for a king. Pierre, please. What did you have for lunch? Meatballs. Who knows? But, Miss Revillo, when I fixed a lovely, tempting menu, and when Mrs. Poppinger sees it, what happens? Instead of the shrimp cocktail, she wants oysters. Instead of the tomato soup, vicious was. Instead of the Long Island duckling breast of Guinean sucloche. Always substitution, substitution. And if she comes in here, I will substitute my lovely sweet disposition and chop her into cutlets with this. Well, I I've been a waitress, Pierre, and I know just how you feel. Yeah. Did you wash the lettuce, Claude? We, oui, Pierre, even with soap. Bon, bon. 
Yes, this Mrs. Popinjay is always upsetting me, and I must be happy to do my best. Like now, I must put in a pinch of salt, so, a pinch of pepper, so, a pinch of garlic, a pinch of cloves, and a pinch Ouch, of... Ouch, Pierre. Pardonnez-moi. Oh, there's Pierre talking to Maisie. Well, oh, yes. If Mrs. Poppinger is coming down here right now, she wants to meet Pierre. Oh, no. I'm Mr. Cleaver. I'll call the police. Quick. Grab him and take him into the vegetable room before he commits premeditated hamburger on Mrs. Poppinger. No, no, let go of me. I've got him. Right in here, hurry. And put something in his mouth to gag him. <laughs> Oh, wait, please. Oh, well, I, I just wanted to look over the kitchen, you know. <laughs> oh, I love the food here. It's simply exquisite. And I've been all over the world and lots of other places, too. Oh, Miss Bevere. Oh, hello, Mrs. Poffinjay. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I'm just trying to keep accidents from happening to people. Accident prevention week, you know. Really? <laughs> what could happen to anybody down here? Oh, anybody could get her throat cut. <laughs> eh, hey, run along, Sydney, or I'll smudge up your brass buttons. Uh, I'll be good. Well, Mrs. Pottinger, you could get your hand badly hurt if it went through the meat grinder. But how could my hand get in there in the first place? Very easy if somebody forced it. Oh, dear child. Now, tell me, where is that wonderful chef? Where is the genius who creates the marvelous food we have? Oh, well, um, just at the moment he's meditating, oh? he's uh, thinking about something he'd like to cut up. Splendid! I wonder if he realizes that I am the one who ordered both the chicken tetrazzini and the beef grenadine last night. Oh, I'm sure he does. Oh, uh, my. What was that? Uh, just, just the mice. Yeah, you see, they, they do so well on Pierre's food that they grow to the size of cocker spaniels. Oh, <laughs> well, my, uh, I think I'll be running along then. Yeah. Do tell Pierre that I was here to compliment him. Oh, I will. Uh, you follow me, Mrs. Poppinger. <clears throat> well, we just make connections that time. Hey, now, Pierre, uh, promise not to blow your beret. It's all right. I will be quiet. Oh, that was a narrow squeak. Has she gone all right? Yes. Did you hear what she said, Pierre? She's eaten her way all around the world, and she thinks your food is the best. Well, she's right, of course, but it's nice of her to say it. She called you a genius, too. Of course, she may be wrong there. It's a matter of opinion. No, 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 no. It's... She sounded like a very intelligent woman. And she had two of your dinners last night. Mm. Intelligent and uh, delightfully plump. Uh, I wonder if uh, she uh, speaks French. Well, just as long as she knows how to say yes, that's enough. I hear that in France hardly anyone ever says no. Uh, Miss Revere, uh, you are the social director, n'est-ce pas? Yes. I wonder if you would arrange for me to... Uh, Meet this charming woman. Oh, I would be delighted to. I'll have a carriage ready for the two of you at nine o'clock tonight. You know, um, she's rich, too. Rich, too? You don't know it yet, Pierre, but you're in love. <laughs> Nice ride. Thank you, thank you. Oh, wow. Well, Maisie, I wonder how it'll work out. Well, they'll have plenty of time to get to know each other. The carriage driver is as deaf as a post. <laughs> Who is it? Hey, Jim Thorndike. Oh, hello, Jim. Come on in, I'm just packing. Oh, thanks. Uh, Maisie, do you really have to leave? Oh, yeah, Jim. My agent just why he's got me a job as a shill for a Ferris wheel. Oh. It's not much of a job, but it's show business, and that's where I belong. Well, couldn't you stick around, Maisie, and see if you couldn't get to like me, uh, well, a little better? Oh, well, thanks, handsome, but i got to be on my way. Who is it? It's me, Grimshaw. Oh, I'm not here. For heaven's sake, Thorndike, if you can't whisper quietly, write things out on a piece of paper. Hello, Mr. Gimshaw. How are you today? I'm in a foul mood, thank you. What's this? All packed? You're not leaving us, Miss Revere. And you'll notice that's not in the form of a question. It's a statement. 
what's the matter now? You've got to break up that romance between Pierre and Mrs. Poppinjay. She's bought the hotel across the street for him, and they're going to run us out of business. Uh, goodbye, fellas. This is where I came in. You come back here. You've ruined us. Stop her! <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Well, Mrs. Poppinjay and Pierre got married, and Jim wanted me to make it a double wedding. But I told him my boyfriend in Brooklyn wouldn't like being engaged to a married woman. He and Mr. Grimshaw got fired for letting Pierre get away from the hotel. But they got jobs at the hotel Mrs. Poppinjay bought for Pierre to run. And everybody's happy. Everybody except me, of course. When I got to the Ferris wheel job, it was taken. And I ended up as a ticket jockey on a merry-go-round. I managed to fill it with grown men, but the kids are complaining to the management, and I guess they'll have to get a chance to say they went around with Maisie Revere, too. Well, come on, feet. you got to find Maisie a job that isn't such a vicious circle. Let's get going. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by John L. Green. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Peter Leeds, Sidney Miller, Frank Nelson, and Hans Conried. Jack McCoy speaking. (laughs) 